what is going on guys welcome back to another swift video in today's video we're going to be learning how to build a stretchy table view header so basically what you see here it says top bit so it's uh, fairly popular in some pretty pretty big apps so it's the notion of as you pull down the table view it kind of just stretches with this like cool rubber band effect and similarly when you scroll down and you collapse instead of the header just getting pushed up it kind of gives you this like parallax effect where the cells are kind of overlapping on the z-axis the header uh, but regardless of my bad explanation of what this actually is you guys can all see it so we're going to take a look at how to build this together so make sure to smash that like button as always helps out with the video algorithm and uh, engagement and all that good stuff so let's uh let's get extra ready get excited let's talk about some stretchy headers all right, we're gonna begin by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We're gonna stick with the app template and let's go ahead and call our project stretchy table view header. Make sure your language of course is Swift, your lifecycle UI kit, and make sure this guy is storyboard and not Swift UI. So we're gonna stick with storyboard, go ahead and continue. We'll save it to our desktop. And first things first, what we're gonna need is an image to actually use as the header that's gonna be stretchy. So I'm gonna pop into my uh, XE assets file over here and right click, and we're gonna hit image set. And I'm just gonna go ahead and call this image. And I just went to Google images and grabbed this cool looking image here. I'm simply gonna drag this guy in and drop it right there. I've also got a simulator opened up here. So let's just pick this from the list here. It's the only one actually. Go ahead and hit that run button. And let me also close this panel, expand our Xcode window. We should be greeted with our empty app here. Obviously the sim is in dark mode, which is perfectly fine. And we're gonna be working in the view controller here. Now, a stretchy header is fairly simple to implement, uh, all in code, no storyboard, but there is a bit of math involved. So instead of having you guys sit here and watch me type out a bunch of math and do some mental arithmetic, I went ahead and typed it out beforehand. I'm simply dragging it in now. And don't worry, we're gonna go through this line by line. It's uh, roughly 70 lines of code fairly straightforward and we're going to set up the table right now actually. So for a stretchy header we need something to add the header to. In this case it's going to be a table view so we're going to create a very very simple table view here. If you're not familiar with table views in general and you know how to register a cell and all that good stuff I've got tons of videos on that stuff on this channel so just search up uh, table view on the channel and you'll find hopefully the video uh, that you're looking for. So we're just gonna create this table view here. Let's go ahead and register a basic UI table view cell dot self and with an ID of cell. I'm simply going to now add this as a sub view. Let's give this guy a delegate and a data source. And let's not forget to give it a frame. And of course, we're gonna need to conform to the table view delegate and the table view data source and bring in the two required functions, which is number of rows, we'll say a hundred. And let's actually add some models in a second, but bear with me. We're gonna say sale for row at index path. And from here, we're simply gonna DQ a reusable cell with an identifier, which is cell that we registered for index path and let's go ahead and return a cell. Let me just quickly make a small array of some strings here so we don't have the same looking cell. Let's call it models. And let's just do cities. Let's do New York, London, uh, Hong Kong, Seattle. And I'm going to be lazy and copy and paste these now. So y'all don't have to sit and watch me type all this stuff out. Here we're going to say models.count and the cells label is simply going to be the given model at the given cell position. So go ahead and hit command R to build and run and you should see a basic table view now. Let me just expand my Xcode window here. If I can grab it, there we go. You should see the basic table view like so. Let's go ahead and add a stretchy header. 
So before we go and add any more code, let's go back to this file that I dragged in. Let's go through this. So the premise of a stretchy header is quite simple if you think about it. As you scroll your table view down, you basically need to tell the header to adjust the way it looks based on how far you scroll down or up. And you can do that fairly easily with constraints. Now, one really important principle to keep in mind is uh, a UI table view inherits from UI scroll view. And same thing for collection view if you want to add a stretchy header to that. And the reason that's important is because we can get the scroll inset positions to pass into our header. So if we just command click into the definition of a UI table view, you'll notice that it inherits from a UI scroll view. This is code written, of course, by Apple, and this is how they built it. So going back to our stretchy header, let's go through this line by line. So first things first, we have an image view in here, and this is the image view that we're gonna assign our header image to. Fairly simple, it's public, so we can access it straightforward. Next up, we have a few different private variables. So the first one is the height of the image view, the bottom of the image, the container view for the image, and then the container view height. The reason that we have these heights in here and the uh, sizing bottom variable is basically uh, because these are the things that we're gonna need to adjust to make sure the stretchy header functionality works. Container view is just a container for our image view. Nothing fancy there. We've got an initializer that we're calling our two custom functions in that we'll get to in a second. And of course, this is also just a required initializer. Create view simply adds the container view and adds the image view into the container view. Pretty simple. And this is where half of the magic is happening. We're applying a bunch of constraints. So the first thing we're applying constraints to is the container view and the bounds of this entire header view. We're basically saying in these lines here that we want the width and height of our container and our header, basically the super view of the container to be equal. We also want the container to be centered in the header. Fairly straightforward. Now we're setting uh, false to translates auto resizing mask for constraints. This is required to make sure that the constraints work properly. Then we are constraining the container view uh, with the image view to make sure the image is nice and centered. And then we're adding a bunch of more things to the image view, same thing, translates auto resizing. We're assigning the height of the image view. Um, and basically we're setting uh, all of these constraints to active. So it makes sense. We basically configured a basic header view. Then here is a really interesting function that makes a stretchiness happen. And this is the one that I wanted to avoid writing out uh, while I was recording, because it's kind of a bit of a mental, mental gymnastic exercise. But before we get to this, let's go ahead and let's see how to add this header. So how do we add it? So really, really simple. All we need to do is create that header view, which is a stretchy header view. And we're gonna create it with a frame, which is a CG rect of zero, zero. Give it a width that you want. I'm gonna use a width of the current view. And I want it to be a square. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this and throw that into the uh, height as well. Now on this header, we have a image view. I'm gonna go ahead and assign it to the image that we went and dragged in. I think we called it image. And then finally, don't forget to add this as your table header, just like that. So go ahead and hit command R and see what happens now. We should see a header here, hopefully. All right, looks like we do. All right, we pull it down. Obviously we notice that it's not a stretchy header. So what gives? We definitely have a header, but it's not stretchy. So clearly something's broken. Um, and what's broken is actually we haven't hooked up this function call yet. Notice that it's public and this function is really where the rest of the magic happens, the other 50%. The first 50% is configuring the uh, starting point and then this is the other piece. What's happening in here is, is the view expects the table view, which is the scroll view in this case, to tell this view once it has scrolled or changed its scroll position. In other words, when I scroll down, the header view should get notified to readjust itself and it also by scroll, you know, pull it down like that and vice versa. I'm not gonna go through every single line of the actual math in here, but the gist of what's going on in here is that we're updating the height of the container view based on the Y inset of the scroll view. And then we're calculating the offset here 
which is based on the scroll views offset y and the content inset. Keep in mind, scroll view here is referring to the table view because table view inherits from scroll view. And uh, we're basically going ahead and updating these two variables that we had at the very top of our uh, class here. The first one is image view bottom and the next one is image view height. We're updating the constants of those because these are both constraints. So enough of uh, explaining it, let's see how to actually put that into action. So what we want to go ahead and do in here is also conform to UI scroll view delegate. And what we can go ahead and implement now is scroll view did scroll, which of course will work for the table view as well. And be careful to pick this function and not this one. And once you pick it, we need to get that header from the table. So we're going to say the header is table view, table header as the stretchy table header. And if we're not able to get it, we're simply going to return. And once we have the header, we're simply going to call that function. We're going to say scroll view did scroll, and we can just pass in the scroll view. You can, of course, just pass in the table view directly as well because it's basically one and the same. I'm just going to stick with table view because it's better readability. And these are the four magic lines that make the stretchiness factor work. So if we start up the app now, the first thing you'll notice is the header actually takes up the entirety of the top, whereas before it was uh, you know, not going over the status bar. And when we pull, you'll notice it stretches down because what it's doing is it's basically adjusting the height of the image based on the inset of the scroll view. And once we scroll down, you'll also know that you'll notice that it has this really cool looking stretchy, collapsy uh, kind of look to it, which is what is fairly popular in a lot of apps. Now we don't have that many models here, so we can't scroll all the way down. So uh, let me be extra lazy and copy and paste these. So we have more models. Go ahead and hit Command R and let's see what this looks like. If you have a nice and long list as you scroll, um, you'll notice it's kind of like a parallax effect also. As you scroll, it disappears. It doesn't just get pushed up. Um, and there you have it. That's how you can add a stretchy header to your app. But once again, just to go through this, uh, I will be adding this uh, source obviously to GitHub for channel members, but in essence, what we have going on here is in this header, in this custom view, we have an image view that we assign our image to. We've got some height and constraint properties here that are private. We have our initializers. We have a function to add the container and image sub view. We have the first 50% of the magic going on here, which is setting up our constraints for the container and image. Then we have the other 50% going on here in which we notify to the container image that the adjustments need to be made to the image bottom and image height when scroll view did scroll is called. And of course we call that here in our view controller. So that said, that's all I've got for you guys. If you haven't destroyed that like button, make sure to do so for the YouTube algorithm, helps out with video engagement, of course. Comment down below if you have any questions, if you wanna see this for collection views, do you like stretchy headers? Do you use them in your own apps? What do you think of them? Also video ideas, anything you wanna hear, say, feedback, love hearing from you guys. Hit subscribe, of course, and that notification bell to stay up to date with iOS Academy videos. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.